Hey, hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from weatherwist.com, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. This is my fourth attempt to do, complete this video. I'm going to complete it if come hell or high water. It's 10 o'clock here, in, no, actually 9 o'clock here in the east, 6 o'clock west coast time. Let's talk weather. Lots of talk about here. Things are really happening here in the weather office, and a lot of clients had to be notified and a lot of stuff. So this came out much later than I wanted it to come out. But paying clients get the information first. It's just one man. It's just me, folks. So playing, I know you want to see it. And I like making the videos for you all, the general public, on the Facebook page and the YouTube. But clients get it first. Topics. A pattern so far, what it means, what it tells us, where it's going. We'll talk about an event on January 19th, January 21st, and some Facebook weenie hysteria. The Great White North, another event January 24th, and then another one the 28th. I know it says January 25th. It should be the 28th. All right. Positive teenage pattern. Let's review for a second. It is not a positive PNA pattern. The difference here is that the ridge is in the eastern Pacific, extends up to Alaska. So the ridge is not on the west coast. Now, at times, it may get moved to the west coast, but the mean ridge position is in the eastern Pacific up to Alaska. Now, because of that, that means the trough on the East Coast is also pulled back to the West over the plains of the Midwest. And as because of that, point number three, the Southeast Ridge becomes a more prominent feature. And point number four, the cold pattern is centered over the upper plains of the Midwest, especially early in the winter, and the snow pattern is over the Midwest. Now, the folks at CPC have calculated what December 2013 was, and it came in as the strongest positive TNH pattern ever. Not the second or top five or top ten strongest ever of all time. That's important because it will mean something for January and February. Now, this is the textbook definition of a teenage pattern. And we can see it. I posted this map before. <clears throat> and we can see very nicely here. There's the ridge, as you can see. Here's our huge vortex. And at that point, that means it's a uh, positive Arctic oscillation. You can see there, Arctic oscillation. And a positive NAO. Because this feature is so huge, it covers Greenland. And then there's a very strong southeast ridge. Now, that's December, but that's what the pattern looks like in general. And this is the December 2013 pattern. I mean, that's, boom, that's it. That's identical. Wow. It, can you get any more textbook than that? No, not in real life. Now, if you look at our temperatures, where's the coldest air? Over the upper plains. And where was it mild? Over the southeast. You know, this stuff really does work. Got to tell you. Okay, uh, this was the pattern upper maps from December uh, 4th. And we remember the trough was out in the west. You remember we had a pretty chilly November. We had the rainstorm, Thanksgiving. Then we warmed up, and a lot of people were saying, uh oh, looks like it's going to stay warm right through mid December. No snow, positive Arctic oscillation, positive NAO, and no winter. Okay, blah, blah, blah. All right. Then what happened is, of course, uh, that did not quite work out. So that was December 4th. Then by December 10th, we got a bit of a cold uh, shot, shot coming in. And that was very nice to see. And there's this December 11th pattern, as you can see. Now, look what's happened here. The vortex is now way up and is over. You can see where it is. It's come south. You can see that very nicely right in here. And we got a bit of a trough here. And there's our ridge. Not a viciously cold pattern, but cold nonetheless. And this is December 21st. Now, this is when we turned really warm. What happened here, if you recall, the vortex split into the two. Remember? And a piece of it went all the way to Greenland. And that's when they got those huge storms that hit Iceland and the United Kingdom and Ireland but the week before Christmas. Those monster hurricane-like storms, 940 millibars, 930 millibars. That's when that happened. And the other piece of the vortex uh, split and went this way, back up into here. But that established the trough of the western United States and with a ridge over the, over the southeast. And this is when everybody turned warm. Remember that warmth we had December 20th, 22nd, 23rd? 20, it was very, very warm. Uh, that's when we had 60s and 70s record warm temperatures, okay? And then December 26th, we started cooling off. But look, up to the north, what do we see? There's the vortex way up in here. And it's going to change when it's going to come south again. And when it does, here comes the cold. December 30th, uh-oh, here it comes. Boom, there's the snowstorm for January 2nd or 3rd. The vortex came south. We actually have actually a teeny little bit of a negative NEO right in here. Yay, first one all winter. And uh, then that lifted out as well. That was January 3rd. January 6th, of course, this was the bit of Arctic blast. Now you can see that vortex, which was here before, as now this piece has come way south. And that's exactly what happens, and we get the severe Arctic outbreak of 
January uh, 6th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. Okay, that's when Al Roker is going ballistic, doesn't know what he's talking about. And then finally, look what happens. That swings all the way from here up into here. See that? And now it's up to the top of the page. And now suddenly the Southeast Ridge is back. Yes, and we're warm again. Amazing how that works. So cycles of cold, then warm, then cold, then warm. All right? Whenever the vortex comes south, you get snow chances, and you get uh, cold patterns. And then when it lifts north, it turns warm again. This is the current upper, upper pattern. You can see our trough over the Midwest redeveloping. The ridge on the west coast is getting strong again. There's a polar vortex way up to the north in the Arctic region, and, but it's going to change. Now, so the, peanut, so the positive teenage pattern is directly connected to the massive pool of warm water in the sea surface temperatures, you know, in the North Pacific. It follows that the strong TNH pattern will last as long as the pool of warm water in the North Pacific lasts. This basic and obvious reasoning was has escaped a lot of private energy meteorologists and forecasters. Last week, one of them said near record warm February temperatures. Ooh, that does not look very good. Then here's February TNH pattern. Does that look like record warm February temperatures to you? I don't think so. Now, what's happened here, this is different than the December one. So let's take a look for one second. Notice what's going on over Greenland here. We go look over Greenland. What do we see? Yes, that's a negative NEO developing a little bit. Not a huge one, but a little bit. The vortex has come south, and the southeast ridge is now displaced further to the south. So the mean storm track is running right through here. That's not a bad storm track for the lower mid-Atlantic and the Tennessee Valley. I've got to tell you. So February has some possibilities. Indeed, if you look at the top five February uh, positive teenage patterns. Look at the amount of uh, above normal precipitation here in the Tennessee Valley and the Middle Atlantic states. Look at this in here. See this in here? Wow, that's above normal. Very dry up in here, though. You can see that. And uh, that's because the storm track gets suppressed to the south. And look at the temperatures. Cold everywhere. Very impressive. All right, let's talk about January 19th for a second. This is a weak system. It's a clipper, but it's very strong in the upper levels of the atmosphere, and it might produce an inch or two of snow <coughs> in the morning of, into the morning of the 19th. It's also going to be a lot colder, so we won't have the precipitation fall as rain or mixture for a while. So uh, you can see the system very strongly there. This is the uh, GFS from midday today, very nicely. Uh, very strong system there. Here is the ANAM. Again, powerful system. Upper levels of the atmosphere are swinging through North Carolina, Virginia. This is what the NAM radar looks like. Now, you can see very strong snow there over Indiana and Ohio on the evening of the 18th. Now, a lot of that's going to fall apart when it crosses West Virginia and Western Pennsylvania. But it looks like it's going to bring some sort of snow to Western and Central Virginia, Western and Central North Carolina. Uh, as we get closer to the event, the models might do a little better in picking up. But we're going to lose some of the snow because of the mountains. But it could produce an inch or two of snow, not out of the question. And this is the uh, GFS uh, Relative humidity field, that looks pretty decent for for the morning of the 19th, 1 a.m., not bad. And there's the Canadian showing a nice system as well. Now, interestingly here, this is the uh, on the, on the uh, later on, I believe on the 20th, and we can see the uh, bean trough is here. What we need to get a big storm on the East Coast is we need to, we need something to come down this way and swing through. So that has to, what's, that's what has to change. Let's talk about January 21st. Now here the European is showing that because the ridge explodes up this way, you can see the ridge going up this way, the trough now gets pulled back to the west a little bit. And that gives a chance for the January 21st clipper to develop. Now the Canadian, some people look on the Canadian here at midday and went, wow, look at that big huge snowstorm on the east coast. This was the Thursday Canadian midday. The problem is they didn't look at the map 12 hours before. This is a rainstorm that ends as snow. This is all... This is all rain in here, folks. Rain. That's the rain snow line. You can't just look at one map and say, wow, look at that snowstorm. <laughs> Don't work that way. Got to follow the model all the way through. You can't pick the model that you want. This is the GFS here uh, from midday, and it's got the clip below going through Virginia. This would be rain for Richmond if the GFS is right, and for North Carolina, and for eastern Virginia, but snow for West Virginia, Maryland, D.C., Baltimore, Philly, into the mid-Atlantic states the big cities there and it develops nicely on the GFS that's a possibility that could be very reasonable and we can see this is the European from early on uh, the, uh, the 15th actually I believe this was uh, a very nice system that develops very strongly uh, it's a possibility of the afternoon that the one here on Thursday afternoon does not develop it nearly like this so we'll have to wait and see how it develops
Now, this is January 24th. Now, this is different because what's happening here is, remember we talked about we needed a piece of energy to come in over Montana or through the West? We see that happening here on the European. This is the day seven European from Thursday afternoon. And we can see that piece of energy very prominently featured right here. And that's going to come down like this. Okay? That's why that's important. And um, we can see that this is what the European does with the rain shield. That's significant snow for western and central North Carolina, most of Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey. And we can see it even more there. Big snowstorm for a lot of people on the 24th and 25th because that system comes into the west. It's got to come in by Montana and the Dakotas. It can't come in through Wisconsin or anything like that. That's, that's going to change things dramatically. This is the GFS. Notice it's got the system as well, but of course, because the GFS overdoes the cold air, it's got the low over South Carolina, much further to the south. And then finally, I posted this map a couple of days ago. Not finally, rather. I posted this map a couple of days ago, um, and you can see that the models are beginning to form a linkage. Uh, between uh, the two ridges here you can see this is the Alaskan Ridge here you can see it very nicely and then this in the one in Russia the forming up and what that does is it ends up trapping the polar vortex so uh, I wanted to bring up that and because that ends up bringing us to the great white north yeah I love that show anywho uh, this here was the, the European for this afternoon. You can see the vortex way south, just north of Wisconsin, Minnesota. Brutally cold air. Um, very impressive system here. Uh, and you can see the enormous, look at the negative Arctic Oscillation. Look at the negative NEO developing now. Very impressive. And the uh, European, um, actually, uh, this is actually, I believe, the uh, yeah the GFS, excuse me, has an Arctic wave developing on the front on the 26th and the 27th that slides off the North Carolina coast, which would bring a massive ice storm to the deep south, heavy snow to the Tennessee Valley and the mid-Atlantic states. Look at the extreme cold over Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana. Good googly moogly. That's impressive. And, uh, in fact, if you looked at this, you can see this is the European map, the uh, from from the folks from MDA, and you can see also the Arctic air coming southward. Very impressive indeed, to say the least. And then uh, actually, this, this is the European ensembles, which are even more impressive. It's got the polar vortex over James Bay, and uh, a huge uh, negative Arctic oscillation, and now a negative NEO. Um, the Arctic front is way to the south, uh, so this is very impressive. Uh, maybe as, as cold as what we saw January 5th, 6th, or 7th. Maybe colder. It's later in the season. It could be even colder. And if you look at the temperature anomalies, these are minus 15 Celsius. That's minus 16 to minus 24 Fahrenheit below normal, the 850 temperatures. Uh, so that's a very, very impressive cold air. That's how we get our surface temperature forecast, by looking at the 850 millibar temperatures and bringing them down to the surface. So that this is, remember, we're dealing with the latest time of the year here. This is the coldest air mass of the seasons, typically. So if you're getting minus 12 or minus 13 or minus 15 anomalies relative to normal in late January, that's impressive cold. So that's what I think is happening. And... Uh, and finally, this was my January forecast uh, made back in November, where you can see the first half of January had a bit of a trough here in the eastern half, which is, and clippers coming down, as you can see that with the orange. And then um, you can, let me call it up so you can see here a little bit. This was the original first, January 1st to the 15th. And then this monster trough, January 16th to the 31st. Uh, that that's I don't know if I was lucky or skilled or if I saw what that was going to happen with the TNH. I did see the TNH pattern developing. That's why I made the January forecast, and so far it looks amazing. My December forecast was very good, though. So based upon the model data, I think it looked very good here for January as well. So we'll see. I'm on a roll. We'll see what happens. This is meteorologist DT from Weatherist.com. I'll talk to you soon.